Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Shauna and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about some of the products that I regret purchasing. Now, every once in a while a product comes along that everybody on the planet Earth seems to love except for me and it makes me feel like I'm all alone and that I'm the only one and maybe there's something wrong with me. But then I'll see a video like this and think, oh, it's not just me, I'm not all alone. So this is one of those videos. I don't like to call these crap product videos or makeup fail videos because most of the time there are a lot of people that like all these different products not every product is suitable for everyone so there might not necessarily be anything wrong with these it's just it just didn't work out for me um, and if you love these products I totally understand and I'm sorry I totally understand where you're coming from um, when I watch videos like this and someone's bashing something that I love and can't live without it makes me paranoid that you know, if this person keeps spreading these lies about my product that I love, it's going to get discontinued and then what am I going to do? But one thing that I've learned is there is so much stuff coming out on the market now these days, these days you guys, like seriously, if something gets discontinued, there's going to be something that comes out that you like just as much or, or if not even better. So anyway, if you're interested in some of the products that I regret purchasing, then just keep on watching. Okay, so I've got my Tim Burton box here filled with stuff that I regret purchasing. And the first, let's say, category that I'll start with is mattifiers. So, as I have mentioned numerous times on this channel, I am very, very oily. I'm not n normal to oily. I'm not an oily combo. I'm not just oily in the T-zone. I'm straight a greasy, disgusting mess. I'm oily absolutely everywhere. So I've tried a lot of different products to try to control my oil and mattify my skin. And these three in particular just did not work for me. And the first one that I'll be talking about is this one here from Benefit. And this is the Benefit Dr. Feel Good Mattifying Balm. And I like to really give products a nice, good, solid try before I reject them because a lot of times um, some of my favorite things are things that I hated at first but I had to really work with and get used to and find the right way to use it um, to work for me. Um, this product I purchased twice and regretted it both times and I gave it a nice good solid try. Um, but what this is, is it's like a, a mattifying balm. So it's like this balmy texture and it smells very... Um, very earthy and woodsy and holistic and just very earthy herbal scent which isn't a bad thing i don't mind the scent but um and it is a very balmy kind of smooth texture and when you first apply it to your skin it does it does mattify your skin i mean yeah Woo. drop the cap so it does mattify upon initial application but what i don't like about this is a couple different things um, the matte effect that you get from this doesn't last more than like 10-15 minutes I found um, and it doesn't really do anything to control my oil throughout the day and I found I had to just constantly keep keep applying it and keep reapplying it just to, just to stay matte throughout the day. Um, another thing that I don't like about this is, is it comes with a little sponge so you could apply it with the sponge, the blotting sponge or you could use your fingers and what ends up happening is, is your makeup and, and oil from your skin transfers onto the product and it just starts to form this really gross, dirty looking layer. Ugh, it just, it sounds disgusting and it is disgusting. So I just couldn't get past that because it's just, it's just, it's just gross, you know? So I would not repurchase this. The next product that I will not repurchase is this mattifier here from Cargo. And this is the Cargo Blu-ray High Definition Oil-Free Mattifier. And this, um, the instructions on this said that you can use it underneath your makeup and you can use, also use it on top of your makeup. I've tried both ways of using this and couldn't get it to work for me either way. Um, when I applied it underneath my makeup, kind of as a primer, I found that my makeup or my foundation on top of it just kind of hovered on top of it and was just kind of slipping around and moving all over the place. So it made my makeup just, it just made it move around way too much. Um, second thing is, is it made me greasier throughout the day. Every time I tried this, it just kept getting oilier and oilier and oilier. So it doesn't do anything to control the oils, but it does seem to mattify when you first initially apply it like the, the balm. Um, but it just, it made me oilier and it just, it didn't make my makeup sit very well. Um, and same thing when I put it on top, when you put it on top of your makeup, it just kind of muddles your makeup up. So I just, this just didn't work for me. Everything that I just said about that cargo mattifier, I could also say the same thing for this Smashbox, except I would say that the Smashbox one was probably even worse when it came to just slippage. Um, when I wear this underneath my makeup, my foundation is just so slippery and it just doesn't seem to set. 
and it just seems to it looks cakey I mean it makes my makeup look cakey on top of this and then when I wear this on top of my makeup same thing it just made me greasier and oilier throughout the day and it feels heavy it feels heavier than it really is so I would not repurchase this and the next product that I would not repurchase is this lip product here from from L'Oreal. This is um, I don't know what this is called because it doesn't say it anywhere on the tube. Um, but if I find out what it is, I'll leave it down below. And this is a lip product, and this is one of those kind of like lip lacquer products. And this is the only shade that I've tried, so I can't speak about the other ones. But this is in the shade Pink Resistance. And what I did not like about this, ooh, the sun's going away. It's cloudy. Anyway, um, what I did not like about this is, okay, so it's got a little doe foot applicator, so I like the applicator, but the shade, it's just a really light pink, but it's so sheer that it does not show up on my lips at all. So the whole purpose of even putting this on, what's the point of putting it on? I can put on a lip balm that's more moisturizing that gives me more color than this does. So this just did not show up on my skin or on my lips. And another thing I noticed about this is when it dries down, it dries down to kind of that like um, hotto, like kind of plasticky, latexy feel. I suppose I just didn't really like that feeling of it. It's not the most comfortable feeling on your lips, on my lips anyway. So I would not repurchase this. Next product that I would not repurchase is this mascara here from Rimmel, and this is the Rimmel Lash Accelerator. And this isn't necessarily a bad product. A lot of people like this product, and I've spoken about this in my haul video. Um, it just wasn't the greatest formula for my lashes. I've got very stick, straight, sparse, short, pathetic, puny lashes. My lashes suck, basically. And this just accentuated the sparseness, and it didn't hold a curl at all. So if you need something to hold your curl, I wouldn't recommend this because it just made them just so <laughs> stick straight. It just totally just whipped them out. So I would not repurchase this. Next product that I would not repurchase is this moisture stick here from e.l.f. And I first saw this product on Emily Noel 83's channel. And the way she used this was, is she used this, um, she just rubbed a little bit on her finger and she just kind of patted it underneath her eyes to just kind of rehydrate her under eyes and not make it look so cakey or creasy or whatever. Um, and I do tend to get a little dry under my eyes and look a little, you know, crusty under there. So I thought that this would be perfect for me. Um, but I didn't get the same effect that she got. I mean, I, I did blot it under there and it felt a little bit more hydrated, but it didn't look any more hydrated. It still looked just as crusty as it did before I used it. Um, and I've tried this on top of different kind, you know, different concealers that I use and it didn't really do anything for me. Um, it does have decent, you know, moisturizing ingredients in there and very, it's very hydrating. But um, another thing about this is, is it does contain parabens. And I do try to stay away from parabens. I mean, unless this, the product is something spectacular that I can't live without, I really won't make an exception if it has parabens. Um, my mom's got, my mom has breast cancer. This is the second time she's been diagnosed. I'm at a great risk, so you know I'm trying to stay away from parabens. And um, yeah, I mean, not a bad moisturizer. Quick, you know, it's a nice, it's a stick, so it's quick. It's not messy or anything, so it's easy on the go. But it's just not something that I would repurchase. And the next product that I regret, I have purchased this one twice also. And this is from Bare Minerals, and this is the Bare Minerals um, concealer in the shade Well Rested. And again, I don't think that this is a bad product at all. I just think that this shade isn't the right shade for me. Um, the first time I purchased this was at Nordstrom and the sales lady, I asked her, I'm like, yeah, I'm, you know, I've got really dark under eye circles. I'm looking for something to cover my circles and just make me look more awake and, you know, my eyes look brighter. And she's like, oh, you've got to try the well rested. Everybody loves this stuff and it's the best thing and it's the best selling thing and you got to have it. That's all I wear. That's what I'm wearing right now. And when I looked at her eyes, they looked gray, like gray, and they looked really dry and old really and I don't think she was very old so um, but whatever I took her word for it she's an expert so um, I went ahead and purchased this and the same thing I could say about myself when I put this on um, my under eyes are just a little too dark this doesn't have any peachiness to it to correct the darkness so my darkness just showed through it and it looked gray um, second thing it, it can make your under eye area look really dry um, so I don't like that um, I returned it and then ages later, everybody on YouTube was raving about it, so I got duped again. YouTube made me do it again, and same thing happened. Um, however, I do like the shade Bisque, and I think Bisque is a much, much better color match for me, and it's got that peachiness in it just slightly to cancel out the darkness, and I use it just on the innermost part, you know, just where I'm super, super dark, and it does seem to brighten and cover up that darkness. 
So I do like Bisque, um, and I would repurchase that shade, but I would not repurchase Well Rested um, for myself. Mm. Next product that I would not repurchase is this foundation stick here from Pixie. Um, I really like Pixie products, and the founder of Pixie is a woman on the go, and she has this concept of combining products and making things really easy and simple for women that don't have a lot of time to spend doing their makeup, and I really love the products. I love her concept, um, and this is a foundation stick, and my problem with this was is I had an allergic reaction or a negative reaction to this or something like that. Um, I don't know. I mean, the shade is really nice. It blends out really nice, and it is quick and easy. But um, when I first applied this, um, I put it on, and then I went somewhere, and maybe an hour or two later, I started feeling really um, itchy and like a burning feeling, especially on the bottom half of my face. I was just really just burning and itching. And then at the end of the day, when I came home and washed my face, I did have a rash all over my face. So I, I had a bad reaction to this. Again, not necessarily the product's fault just didn't react well to myself, my body, so I would not be repurchasing this one. Next two products, I can actually say I hate these, you guys, and if you love these, I'm sorry. But the first thing I've purchased three times, and I regretted it all three times. I'm not gonna get into the details on why I purchased it three times, I had my reasons, but I just did not like this at all, and this is the Benefit Some Kind of Gorgeous Foundation Faker. Um, and like I said, I like to give things a good solid try. I did purchase this three times, and as you can see here, this one I've hit pan on. I've used it and used it and used it to try to figure out how to make it work, and this just does not work for me. So this was highly recommended to me by a couple of different salespeople, um, both at Sephora and Ulta, and they're like, oh, if you've got oily skin, you've gotta try this, this is the best thing ever. Um, it's oil-free and just light coverage and easy peasy, you know, out the door. And the thing is, is it is oil-free, but it doesn't feel oil-free on your skin. When you put it on, it feels just greasy. Um, another thing is, is it never seems to set. I put it on my skin and it's just moving around and slipping around all over the place and it's just it just never sets. And I tried setting it with different kinds of powders. I tried primers underneath. I tried um, setting sprays. I've tried everything to get this to work for me and it just, it just doesn't stay put. It makes me greasier throughout the day. Um, the coverage isn't that great. It's a very light coverage, which it's supposed to be, but What's the point in having light coverage if it doesn't if it feels heavy? You know, I mean it just felt really heavy and gross and oily and greasy and it made me greasier and it was slipping all over. Did not like this, would not repurchase this a fourth time, that's for sure. And the last product that I will not repurchase is this powder here from Cargo. This is the Cargo Blu-ray High Definition Makeup. And I cannot remember for the life of me who it was that I saw raving about these. But someone on YouTube was just absolutely raving about these. And they have oily skin too. And they're like, oh, if you've got oily skin, you will love this. It's just the finish. It just makes you look flawless and airbrushed. And she just could not stop talking about it. She had mentioned something about it possibly being discontinued. Um, as soon as I watched that, I did a little bit more research. I went to Makeup Alley, and this has extremely, unusually high reviews on Makeup Alley. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen a product that has as high of an average views or um, views, such a, a high rating as these did on Makeup Alley. So I just had to rush out and buy them. And I bought several. I bought two here for myself. I've got one in the shade 30 and the shade 20. Um, I bought one for my mom and I bought one for my aunt. Um, my mom and my aunt both have normal to dry skin. I'm just greasy. So we all tried it and I hated this, you guys. Um, you won't be able to see, I don't think, but there's quite a dip in this, so I did use this product quite a bit before I formed a solid opinion about it. Um, so when you first apply this, it looks beautiful. It just looks just flawless and airbrushed and gorgeous. But I don't know, maybe 20, 30 minutes later, it just starts to cake up and separate. And like a half hour after I had put this on the first time, I like kind of glanced by a mirror as I was walking by and I had to do a double take and I'm like, like what the heck is going on with my face? Like it was just, it was breaking up and forming little pools on my skin. And I had to like take a brush and like buff it back out and smooth it back out again. Then about an hour later, it was starting to cake up and settle in lines and things and just it, and separate. Like you could see the little clusters of the pigments and forming pools. It was just, ugh, it was just so nasty, you guys. And I called my mom and my aunt and asked them what they thought. They both threw theirs away. They threw them out. My mom's like, dude, I threw that out. It was 
separating and caking up. It just looked really gross. So yeah, this didn't work for any of us. And um, I'm, I know there's obviously a lot of people that love this, um, but it just didn't work out for me. And I'd go so far as to say is I've never had a powder that looked as nasty on my skin as this one did. Um, it's gorgeous at first, first maybe 15 minutes, but after that for me, it was just disgusting. And mom and aunt said the same thing. So would not repurchase the cargo powder. So anyways, you guys, that's it. Those are all the products that I would not repurchase that I regret. If you love these products, again, I'm sorry. I totally understand how you feel, but this is just my own opinion. These did not work for me. Um, and if you guys have tried any of these products and had the same opinions about these or the same experiences with these, feel free to share and leave your comments down below just so it'll make me feel a little bit better. But anyway, um, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.